today's content. What are we going to be talking about? Uh, we're all uh, hopefully here to talk about Microsoft Teams. So first of all, we're going to touch on what's happening with Skype for Business. When Teams was launched uh, around about two years ago, there was some confusion uh, as to whether it was meant to replace Skype, what was happening with Office 365 or the on-premises uh, editions of Skype. We're going to uh, briefly cover that off just to clear up any confusion. We're then going to go into can Teams actually be used as a PBX? Um, so many people uh, have questions on its capabilities, whether it's robust enough. Uh, we're going to touch uh, on uh, areas such as uh, features, um, what you can and can't do, and also licensing. We're then going to move on to calling plans versus direct routing, and this is a section of the uh, presentation where we'll really touch on uh, voice delivery into Teams, and also we'll talk about voice migration strategies. So that's how we can get you from your existing legacy PBX. Uh, maybe you have a system that's 10, 15 years old, whether that use um, ISDN, whether you have something that's more modern that uses SIP. Uh, we'll talk about how um, we can move uh, from system A, being your old platform, uh, to system B, which would be uh, Teams. So what has happened to Skype for Business? So there's two uh, areas uh, to Skype. There's Skype for Business Online. Uh, it's been out for quite some time now. Uh, many of you on this call may already use this platform. Um, that eventually, uh, there is no definitive date uh, for when this will uh, occur, uh, will be retired in Office 365, and users of Skype for Business Online will be automatically transitioned into Microsoft Teams. You'll receive a notice in the message center of your uh, tenancy. Uh, that can uh, be deferred. However, uh, for those of you that do use Skype for Business Online, um, what you will note um, if you've already seen Teams uh, is the end user client uh, visually and from a functionality perspective uh, is very different. So. Uh, training and awareness um, when you uh, receive that notification to successfully move your workforce from uh, Skype for Business Online to Teams uh, will be a key factor for you. Uh, if you actually go away, maybe you're a new business that's joined this call, um, you're looking for something in the way of uh, an intelligent communications tool. Uh, if you have under 500 employees and you purchase a brand new Office 365 tenancy, uh, Skype for Business Online is no longer an option for you. You will only see Teams. Um, as your uh, intelligent communications tool. So again, more of an intention to, over time, phase Skype for Business Online out uh, and replace that with uh, Microsoft Teams. Uh, for any of you, this kind of wasn't really a, a product that was um, hugely caught on, but Cloud Connector Edition, which allowed you to uh, present uh, local PSDN connectivity, whether that be via ISDN or SIP, um, up into Office 365, essentially Cloud Connector Edition, uh, ran a small subset of virtual machines and presented this connectivity to your tenancy um, will be retired and replaced by direct routing for teams that we're going to talk to uh, you about uh, a little bit later. So on to the on-premise version. Um, this hasn't really gone anywhere. So a new release uh, came out in uh, October of last year. That was Skype Business Server 2019. Um, we've still certainly seen a lot of uptake in this product for organizations that for example, for security reasons, maybe local governments um, don't yet want to put um, everything that they use uh, into the Microsoft Cloud. Um, so that isn't necessarily going anywhere. There have been features released, um, or will be released rather, for 2019 um, in a form of a cumulative update. So that will be uh, HDMI 5 control panel response group failover. And there are a few bits and pieces in the works. Um, what that does offer, however, is um, third-party integration to applications and hardware that perhaps can't be currently achieved in Teams. Um, there's quite a feature-rich set of APIs that are available for the on-premises version of Skype that have been around for a long time. Uh, many back-office applications uh, you can achieve integration with. And that's not quite there yet in Teams, mainly because of the delay from Microsoft in releasing the developer APIs for that platform. Um, but it will most uh, certainly uh, reach that point quite soon. Um, what on-prem also does allow you to do is um, whether you have 2015 um, on the latest cumulative update or 2019, um, you can now uh, configure a hybrid to Teams and utilize uh, the collaboration modes. Um, so that allows users that have perhaps voice and uh, uh, chat uh, via Skype for Business on-prem, you can now allow them to leverage just meetings via Microsoft Teams, and that's actually a great way of introducing the client to users, um, getting them a little bit more aware of what it can provide, uh, and also kind of um, set them up to uh, transfer to uh, Teams in the future. So to kind of clear any confusion, yes, Skype for Business Online will be transitioned to Teams uh, in, the, uh, in the long term. We don't have a definitive date on that. The on-premise uh, version of Skype, that's still going to be around. Um, in terms of its mainstream support, that will continue until 2025. 
So why would you use Teams as your phone system? Um, well, flexibility uh, is one thing. Uh, I don't particularly like this term, but it's a Microsoft marketing term that seems to stick. Uh, it's an evergreen platform. And when they say that, they mean that that system is always constantly updated. So with a legacy PBX platform, perhaps you need a certain firmware or software update uh, to get a new feature that perhaps you like in legacy terms. That may be the ability to terminate a SIP trunk. Um, there isn't any huge cost uplift with Teams. You're paying for your licensing via a subscription model. And by virtue of doing that, you are always uh, going to be on the uh, latest release of the product. So no hefty upgrade fees when uh, new features are introduced. Uh, if you already have an Office 365 subscription, whether that be tiny, maybe you've got an E1, um, we'll talk about small business premium uh, in a later slide. Uh, you're actually 50% the way there to using Teams uh, as your phone system. Um, Teams comes as a part of uh, every Office 365 subscription. Uh, in our opinion, uh, it provides uh, roughly around 80% of general phone system users' needs. So we'll talk about a hunt group equivalents, auto attendance, group call pickup uh, in just a moment. There are considerations, uh, again, that we're going to talk about later, perhaps around call recording uh, and contact center functionality. Uh, but we'll cover those off in just a short while. And if you have an existing audio codes or ribbon SBC investment, again, perhaps you're already a Skype for Business uh, customer, um, these investments can be leveraged. And we'll talk a little bit about that when we get to our direct routing section. So what core PBX features does Teams actually offer? Um, as you probably expect, they have their equivalent for a hunt group. That's actually called a call queue. This uh, provides essentially a number, PSDN facing number that someone can call or internal perhaps. Uh, you get various different options. It doesn't offer uh, opening and closing hours in a call queue. It's kind of a standard hunt group. There are three call distribution methods. So you can do round robin, for example, uh, serial based routing or attendant based routing. Uh, you can have announcements. So thank you for calling HR. Please hold while we connect you. And you have music on hold. So that's a call queue. Uh, routing to agents, as they're called in the product, i.e. users, that's all built around Office 365 Group. So you can use a security group or a distribution group. And that's essentially what you point the call queue at. <clears throat> the next thing they offer is an auto-attendant. So you may well know this is uh, something called an IVR. So you call into a number. You're presented with a selection of options, push one for this, two for this. It's essentially what an auto attendant in Teams gives you. This does give you business hours, and it also gives you in hours and out of hours routing options. Uh, so for example, out of hours, you may want to push that to a voicemail, which would then go to uh, a subset of users. That's delivered via, uh, via an email, for example. Um, you may out of hours need a particular number to go to someone's mobile phone or someone specifically in the organization. That, that can also be achieved. Uh, music on hold, again, um, is included in the auto attendant. This is typically what we would deploy uh, for a customer's main facing telephone number. What actually happens when you get into the configuration of an auto attendant is that you actually point the auto attendant at a call queue. So think of a call queue uh, as an object that contains users that you need to be called. The auto attendants point at those call queues so that an inbound call can be routed to the uh, given users. Uh, call park, uh, this has recently come about uh, in Teams. So that's the ability to uh, park a call and have someone retrieve that using a specific access code, maybe to themselves or to a department. Uh, group call pickup. Now, they call it group call pickup, but it's not perhaps as you would expense, uh, expect rather in a traditional sense. So from a legacy PBX, group call pickup is you, know, you hear a, a phone ring within the proximity of your desk and you dial a pickup code and you retrieve it. So in Teams, uh, you actually do this on a, a per user basis uh, using something called call groups. Uh, you populate users into your core groups that perhaps you'd like to have called if you're not at your desk. They, again, would be people in your proximity. Um, and then you can say, well, I want all those phones to be called at the same time, essentially. So you don't dial a pickup code. You have a toast notification, as they call it, in the corner of your screen to say that, in my case, Barry Byrne wasn't available to answer the call. Would you like to pick it up? Um, or you can have it uh, ring users in a certain order, order. So for lack of a better term, it's also like a miniature hunt group, I suppose. Um, that users can control on a per person basis. Uh, other things that it includes is delegate calling, so quite popular in um, you know, direct to PA scenario, for example, or maybe where a specific, specific person needs to uh, make an outbound call on the user's behalf. Uh, one thing Teams has that Skype didn't really have um, at a user level was uh, call blocking. So you can now populate numbers in the Teams client, perhaps nuisance numbers, maybe it's a sales call, someone you know phoning you that shouldn't have your number. Um, that can be done on a per person basis. And then we get into more common um, 
call routing method simultaneous ring so again that could phone your desk phone when someone calls your ddi and then also route to your mobile <clears throat> supports direct dialing extensions and then something that's reasonably new is hosted voicemail so hosted voicemail uh, is away from exchange online again for those of you that are perhaps familiar with skype for business your voicemail would be powered via uh, unified messaging in exchange online or via an on-premises exchange installation that's now being retired in the latest version of the on-premises uh, exchange and also uh, in Office 365 and now hosted voicemail, it was previously called Azure Voicemail, um, is now automatically enabled for all users in Teams, carries the similar features. You can have an in-hours and out-of-hours uh, call greeting based on what you've configured in your Outlook calendar. Um, and for those of you, again, that have uh, had uh, Skype previously, there is a voice to text translation service. Um, I'd, be, uh, I'd be telling a huge lie if I said it was perfect. Uh, it's not, but it's getting there, um, which again, this service essentially, uh, rather than you listen to the voicemail, it essentially presents it to you uh, in text. So from a core for PBX features, does it act as a phone system? Will it work if you have non-complex calling requirements? Uh, absolutely. But does it really fit everyone? Um, and as with everything, is, is there a catch? So as I've already mentioned, it would fit great for non-complex calling requirements. If you take a basic phone system, it will do absolutely everything that it should do without any additional expense. Where it doesn't natively fit yet is if you have a contact center requirement. So as I mentioned at the start of this webinar, the developer APIs for Teams have been delayed somewhat, are still not fully released to partners. Um, we work with a partner that has created a contact center uh, solution for teams that doesn't rely on their APIs. Uh, we work with a company called Workstream People who develop uh, Anywhere 365. Uh, but in terms of uh, other contact center ven uh, vendors such as Enchouse, uh, Clarity Connect, uh, they don't have native inbuilt teams integration for their contact centers yet. And that's purely just because the APIs haven't been released by Microsoft. So if you're looking for something like a contact center that has CRM integration, maybe you use Dynamics, maybe you use something that's from a third party. Um, not quite there yet. It does work really well if you have an international dispersed workforce because by virtue of it being an Office 365, Teams is available um, globally um, with the exception of uh, a few locations. Um, so where you have a Skype for Business, for example, on-premises deployment or an equivalent phone system and you have users that work abroad, they're having obviously to connect to your head office, which may well be in the UK, and there are various different uh, complications that can introduce, particularly latency around conferencing, uh, voice latency in general, uh, as well as international users are using Teams, they're going to be connecting to a data center that's geographically located near them. So that is definitely a, a plus point for the system. Uh, call recording that I briefly touched on earlier, uh, again, not natively achievable in Teams um, yet. Uh, something that's uh, being uh, voted for on the user voice website, which you can vote for features to be uh, implemented into the product, although this can be achieved with third party software. So we're an audio codes house, we deploy audio code session border controllers, which can be used with Teams via uh, direct routing technology. And they have a product called SmartTap, which is a call recording uh, platform, uh, which can then record calls um, in what traditionally would have been called line side. So outside of the user's control uh, to a degree um, by uh, talking directly to the session border controller. Yes, they can still provide the ability to uh, start and stop recordings for, um, say, payments or, or any other compliance reason that you may have, um, but you can't go into uh, the app store in Teams and download a plugin that would enable call recording. Again, that's not quite there yet. A really important point when looking to move towards Teams or any hosted uh, PBX is wide area network connectivity. Um, if it's poor, your users will have a poor experience. Now, uh, if you have good internet connectivity, uh, network assessment is always the absolute first thing that you should do. Um, then you will probably get on fine with Teams if you're of a certain size or you have uh, you know, user size or you have um, you know, poor wide area network connectivity, then you would need to explore different options, um, you know, maybe a, a lease line or even if you're in a certain position, uh, again, uh, cost permitting, something along the lines of Express Route, uh, which is Microsoft's preferred way to go, but obviously there's a reasonably hefty cost with going down that avenue. So network assessment really does uh, need to be done. So what do you need to use a uh, phone system uh, as a part of Teams? Um, so an Office 365 subscription, I'm guessing probably the, the bulk of you on this webinar have one uh, in some sort of form. Uh, so uh, you can either achieve that, so small business premium, 
Uh, you can't add the phone system license to Small Business Premium yet. That phone system license gives you the capability of using Teams as, as a phone system, um, but that is something that we've been informed is, is in the works. Uh, Skype Business Online Plan 2. Um, now, that is going to be retired very shortly, um, but as of now, that's still an option that you can purchase, which is cheaper than doing an E1, E3, or E5. Um, but if you do have uh, an E1 or E3, you need to add the phone system license. If you had an E5, that phone system license add-on is included. Um, if you don't have an E5, then you must uh, also uh, purchase that add-on. Um, and then you need a calling plan or you need direct routing. So uh, a calling plan, just to cover off the difference between the two, is where you buy uh, a subscription from Microsoft and they provide you with uh, a direct dial number or you could port your number to them. Uh, they provide you with a bank of minutes, a bit like a page you go mobile and then you draw from those minutes each month. And essentially the following month, I guess, you know, recharge would be a term for it um, as you pay as you pay for that service. Uh, so that's Microsoft providing your your minutes, your numbers and you know, from a traditional point of view, your lines, as you would call it. Uh, direct routing is what they did originally brand as uh, you call it bring your own trunk which is um, essentially you providing your own session board controller, your own SIP trunk or ISDN, uh, and you still keep control of your numbers, still keep control of your lines, stay with your existing carrier, but connect that all up to Teams. So how much does it cost? So this is, uh, again, for, for a commercial organization, this doesn't take into account if you have a charity licensing or anything of that nature. A phone system license uh, currently is six pounds. Uh, a domestic calling plan, so that's calling the UK only. This is the cheapest plan you can get, uh, which gives you 120 outbound minutes. Inbound minutes are not um, you know, metered against. Uh, it's £4.20. Or you can step up to a domestic and international plan, which gives you 1,200 domestic minutes and 600 international minutes, and that's £18.10. There's one slightly other way that you can do this, which would be to buy a domestic calling plan for your users, and then utilize something called consumption billing, which essentially is a pot of money you load, uh, and international calls, i.e. calls made outside of your domestic plan, are then pulled from that pot of money, and then you can, again, uh, recharge it. So what does this uh, actually look like? So uh, Yes, it is a little expensive. I've done an example here based on a 250 user organization. So if you bought domestic plans of 120 minutes uh, for 250 users, it would cost you £12,600 per annum. Um, so first of all, also to cover off as well, um, you, you can't say uh, buy a domestic calling plan for one user and then have another user utilize those 120 minutes. Everyone must have their own calling plan. Uh, the minutes are pulled together. So if I used all my minutes. Uh, but there was minutes from, say, uh, a colleague's calling plan that hadn't been used. I can start drawing from those, but everyone must have a calling plan. If we took 150 users and we bought them all a domestic and international calling plan, uh, that would cost me £54,000 uh, a year, which is a lot, or £162,900 over three years. Um, you know, you can imagine how difficult this can be uh, to justify uh, in a business case, or a little bit more real world. Um, would be 80% of my users uh, perhaps have a domestic calling plan, only 20 have domestic and international. That would still cost me £20,000 a year or £62,000 over three years. Now, in, in my opinion, that's an awful lot of uh, money. We'll talk about um, what the solution is uh, is next, which I think is direct routing. So you've probably all got a phone system. You've probably all got a supplier for your, uh, for your PSDN access that you may be quite happy with. Um, you get good rates on minutes, you're paying for your channels, so on and so forth. You can still keep that, if, particularly if you're in a long agreement because you've taken out maybe three or five years to get a better, more competitive rate. You can take that connectivity, uh, connect to a session border controller and present to the team. So you don't have to move all your numbers into Microsoft, which gives them um, you know, control of your numbers. Um, you can still retain that control yourself. So you could go for an on-premise SPC. We're going to talk about this in a minute in our transition slides. Or in fact, if you wanted to take the uh, cloud first, mobile first approach that Microsoft advocate, um, Audio Codes also have a hosted SBC option, which is available in the Azure Marketplace. If you want to go for absolutely nothing on site after you've migrated from your old PBX, that can also be achieved. Direct routing, one key thing with calling plans is if you move all your numbers to Microsoft and use their PSDN service, they don't support analog devices. That's things like faxes, franking machines maybe older chip and pin readers that you may not have moved to an internet-based service yet, or perhaps can't for a certain reason. If you keep an on-premise 
um, session border controller um, or even a hosted one, um, we can connect those to smaller analog devices to service those kind of uh, devices. As mentioned before, you maintain the ownership of your numbers. Uh, you still get to control them. And by doing that, you'll be able to gain non-geographic numbers uh, from a SIP carrier that perhaps aren't available by Microsoft directly. So they've been for a long time. Uh, way back, you couldn't get certain numbers in Ireland. You still can't get certain numbers in uh, major UK cities. Um, so there are some limitations around going towards calling plans. Um, so from our perspective, uh, we're big advocates of uh, direct routing. So how do we actually migrate to Teams if we've got a PBX that's very, very old? So we're going to go through a set of slides now uh, that will give you an idea of how we can actually go about doing that. So our first one is our phase migration. I'm just going to grab uh, a drawing tool just for a second to help. So on the left-hand side, um, now currently what you've probably got is your legacy PBX and you have uh, an ISDN connection or a SIP connection from a carrier. That will traditionally go from our PSTN cloud at the top here uh, and plug straight into our legacy PBX down the bottom. So what we do is we disconnect that ISDN cable from our legacy PBX and we connect it into the session border controller that I've got here in the middle. Now by doing that, we connect the ISDN connectivity directly into the SBC and then we connect a cable from the SBC into our legacy PBX. Now the reason we can do that is when a call comes in, uh, from an external source, might be a customer, it's going to hit our session border controller first. And by doing that, we can denote where that call routes to. So for example, if I've moved myself to Teams uh, and I want calls to my DDI to route there, when the inbound call hits the session border controller, there'll be a route in its routing table that essentially says, any calls to Barry Burns DDI, don't route it down to the legacy PBX. I actually want you to route it to Teams where the call will connect and I'll be speaking to the customer. For example, if I take a colleague's case, maybe Andy, Andy's still on the legacy PBX because he hasn't quite got to got to grips with Teams as a client. When the call comes in to the SBC, we can actually say, don't route that call into Teams, continue and route it down to legacy PBX. And rather than manage a, a great big routing table for all the people in your organization, we can add a little bit more intelligence by doing an Active Directory based search on the session border controller itself. What this means is when a call comes in from the outside world, it hits our session border controller, we query an attribute in Active Directory to essentially say, is Barry Byrne enabled for Teams or not? If the Active Directory query returns true, it sends it to Teams. If it doesn't, it continues down onto our legacy PBX. And what you may now be thinking is, well, how do people that are still left on a legacy PBX call Teams and vice versa? But again, using the session border controller as this junction point between the two systems. When someone calls my extension, i.e. Barry's been moved to Teams, but he phones my uh, three or four digit extension. It doesn't match anything in the PBX anymore. So we, we implement a call forward on the PBX to force that call up to our SBC. Again, it hits our active directory query, which says, don't send the call out to Virgin or BT, send it into Teams. And vice versa, if I sat in my Teams client, I wish to call Andy, I dial his extension. He's not enabled for Teams, so it won't call his Teams client but it will find its way to our session border controller where we can send it down into our legacy PBX. And this is how we create what we call coexistence between the two platforms. There are some key benefits of using this particular method. As you can imagine, it mitigates risk significantly because if you've moved someone over to Teams, it's very easy to move them back again. Fits in with budget for uh, rollout of handsets uh, if you choose to go down that handset rather than the headset route. Uh, and it also gives you, um, again, more flexibility around training. Maybe someone doesn't quite get on with it and you want to move them back to the old PBX or they go to a second training session, you get much more flexibility. Um, it provides compatibility for uh, PRI, that's ISDN 30, BRI, that's ISDN 2E, or even SIP if you already utilize that with a legacy PBX. Um, yes, the session border controller will cost slightly more um, because we have more interface cards in depending on um, what inbound connectivity you have. Um, but this is the easiest way uh, to migrate from A to B. It's very straightforward and by far the uh, most popular approach with our customers. Side by side migration is the next method. Now this is only typically utilized when you have a PBX for a practical manufacturer uh, whereby it's either hosted um, or it's on premises. Uh, however, you don't have any access to that uh, at all. Uh, so in that case, what we do is we uh, again referring to our diagram on the right hand side. Um, the ISDN BRI PRI section that we have at the top here, this is your old PBX. You've got calls to all your customers uh, coming to that system. 
but actually what you'd like to do is move people over to Teams. Now, because that's hosted or it's managed completely and we have no access, uh, what we do is we purchase a whole bunch of new DDIs on our SIP trunk here on the left. And then what we do is when a call comes into the legacy PBX, we have a corresponding temporary DDI for the user. So someone calls me, uh, as in Barry, comes into the legacy PBX. There's a forward on Barry's old handset that goes to a brand new telephone number. So when it comes in, it forwards back up to the PSTN, hits my new SIP number, comes into my SBC, and then routes into Teams. Now, when we've moved all the users over to their temporary uh, numbers on the SIP trunk, uh, we then say to the supplier, OK, we want to port the numbers now away from your hosted or managed service onto, again, a SIP trunk that's maybe been procured by yourselves or one that you've procured through Nexus. And then we end up moving all this section over the way, just scribble it out, and then we've migrated to Teams. We probably had to do this maybe four or five customers uh, where they basically had a managed PBX and had zero control. So we can't really do that phase migration that I talked about uh, in the previous slide. What does this method give you? The pro is, again, reduced uh, risk, um, so easy for users to adopt because you can move them over side by side. Some of you may have realized, though, by the call coming into the old system and it's diverting it back out again to a temporary number, the downside of this approach is that you're actually uh, incurring a local call rate to make an internal call because of bouncing that number out to the public switch telephone network and back into a new service. So not the most preferable, um, but if you're in a certain situation that you need to get out of, uh, this can certainly help. A cut over migration. Um, this is, I'd probably say, the least popular, but more than feasible if you're of a certain user size. Uh, this is logistically potentially the most challenging. So as you can see, um, the diagram is very simple. Um, we essentially take the ISDN connection out of your old PBX and we plug it into uh, the session border controller, which connects to Teams. Now, what that doesn't give us is any ability to move users over in a phased fashion. Uh, it also restricts any testing that we do or implementation to an out of hours period because we need to take that ISDN or SIP connectivity out of your existing system and plug it into our new one to do all of our testing. So uh, risk isn't necessarily uh, taken out. We have to make sure that the testing uh, phase of this has been very robust to make sure um, we, we're confident that it's going to work, but essentially this is the perhaps something you might already be uh, familiar with. You set a day, say a Monday, users go home on a Friday and you say on Monday, okay, you're going to come in and you're going to start using Teams. And the reason why I say that's logistically challenging is depending on the size of your organization, you need a lot of people you know, uh, floor walking on the day. The training has to have been done very, very close to that time to make sure it's fresh in a user's mind. Um, we all know how quickly stuff can disappear from one's memory over a weekend. Um, and uh, as you can see, with risk mitigation, there is no real way to go back to the old system other than taking the cable out of the SBC and plugging it back into the legacy platform. Um, we've done many of these. We tend to uh, really go from a 1 to 150 user. We find that to be the most feasible range. Um, much more challenging if you have several offices that are dispersed over the UK um, or overseas. Uh, if you're a single office, maybe two offices. Um, this could be a good uh, good approach. And again, because there's less complexity in here, the cost of the session border controller and the amount of professional services to configure this particular uh, method um, is, uh, is vastly reduced. So a few things as we come towards the end uh, of the, uh, the overview today, or just some general teams takeaways based on things that we've seen um, other customers uh, uh, fall into traps with. Um, and the things that you just need to be aware of in general, irrespective uh, of the voice element, uh, is first of all, planning with Teams uh, in general is extremely important. Um, if you're coming from a Skype background, um, it's very easy to look at Skype as just a communications uh, tool, you know, IM, conferencing, voice. Teams is a much bigger product than that because of how it aligns itself to other technologies in Office 365, SharePoint, Power Apps, Power BI. Um, there needs to be a much bigger overview of how you roll this system out uh, to users. Otherwise, for users, Teams can be an overwhelming experience, particularly when it's deployed side by side with Skype or other communication tools that you use internally. So planning really is paramount. The number one thing, as I kind of mentioned a little earlier, was to do a network readiness assessment. I mean, it's surprising um, things that can come up during this phase that perhaps you may not be aware of. 
Um, the worst thing is just not to do one at all uh, because you think, um, you know, in inverted commas, the internet connectivity that you have is uh, is acceptable. Uh, voice is extremely latency sensitive, um, so doing a network of readiness assessment is really key. Uh, more around uh, the the bigger picture of Teams really was profiling the users and analysing your business. So, so what areas of Teams do people really need? Do they actually need all of it? What areas of the voice aspect do they really need? Um, can you achieve everything you need to achieve in Teams as a PBX? Do you need contact center integration? Do you need call recording? Uh, requirements around compliance legislation have changed a lot over the last 18 months, uh, particularly around GDPR and, uh, and other policies. So again, a great time to reevaluate those and adjust your, adjust your voice requirements to match them. So something that we see a lot that tends to uh, not grow that, go that great, uh, is just putting Teams out to users uh, and expecting them to adopt them or use it in the way that we may use in IT or we may use as business analysts. Um, everyone uses it different. Um, one thing we see a lot of is Teams goes out there and you end up with duplicated data because some stuff's been put in whichever data storage platform you use currently. Maybe it's SharePoint or maybe it's another product and then it ends up in the files tab in Teams. Um, the other thing is pushing out and getting caught in what we say is the islands mode trap. So you deploy out in islands mode to several hundred users. It's being used heavily, but then it's quite difficult to trans, uh, can translate into teams only mode. And islands has its own challenges in terms of federation and things of that nature. Um, so again, even just you use islands mode as a pilot, but when you push out into production, then think about going to teams only if you can. Again, this is slightly different if you already use Skype for Business on-premise. We'll be running another webinar in the series that will talk specifically about migrating from Skype for Business on-premises to Teams, because that's a completely different story, really, um, as we've been focusing on legacy PBX migration today. Um, don't fall victim to, to call-in plans. As you can probably tell, I'm not a massive advocate of them. Um, I'm slightly of the opinion that in the future calling plans may well disappear and that uh, direct routing will be the way to go. But I just feel you get much more control around direct routing. You're not relinquishing control of your numbers. There is a, an outage to Office 365 and your your inbound number hits a session border controller. We can do something with it. We can divert it to a mobile, put it out to a third party service. But if the numbers are in and controlled by Microsoft um, and that platform has an issue, there's a limited things that we can do to remediate that. Uh, and finally, uh, training is really important, both digital and in person. So uh, first of all, uh, awareness, you know, you're going to make a change, a new product is coming. Again, this ties into that throwing teams out there and kind of expecting people to use it. Um, training is uh, a really, really important thing. There are lots of great resources um, out now for teams. There's the uh, adoption kit that you can download. It contains uh, flyers, things of that nature um, that will help users uh, understand where the product fits. Um, we also have our own our product that helps uh, our, our customers, or designed to help customers uh, introduce Teams. It's called Cloud Step for Microsoft Teams. Um, it's not an all-in-one. You can take certain pieces of it if you wish. Um, for example, you may just need uh, help with uh, the network readiness assessment. Maybe you'd like us to assist just with the direct routing part of you, uh, point of view, or maybe you need help profiling your users. Um, this is what we've created as a service for our customers to help them get to Teams. It was previously uh, CloudStep for Skype for Business, which was built on something called the Skype Operations Framework, which is a stringent set of guidelines Microsoft uh, delivered to partners for the rollout of a, a cloud-hosted uh, service. So if you do have any questions, post this webinar or need assistance, if you speak to us about CloudStep, uh, we'll be more than happy to help. And getting in touch uh, in general, we've got our website, which is www.nexusos.co.uk. If you have any questions following today's webinar, we'll be uh, very happy to, to assist. You send an email to sales at nexusos.co.uk, uh, or if you prefer a, a quick uh, question on social media, uh, you can find us on Twitter at nexusos. So thank you very much for attending today. It's a short overview of uh, using Teams as your PBX. And if you do have any questions or queries uh, following uh, presentation today, please do let us know. Uh, a recording of this will be available, uh, which will be sent to, to all of you uh, if you wish to uh, review it again. That's if you've not had enough of uh, my uh, my dulcet tones. Um, but in addition to that, I uh, just want to say thank you again, and uh, we hope to hear from you soon. Thanks very much.